We're at the top of the pass right now. That was a cool ride. That's pretty fun. I don't know if you could hear anything I was screaming inside of my helmet, but you might have heard some rumbling around. It's pretty windy up here. You can see the grass blowing. Um, wind is coming from the Idaho side, coming up and over, which it normally does. Good old Idaho produces a lot of wind, but there's still quite a bit of snow up here. Um, I'd say, I don't know, on average, maybe two or three foot, just right here, but it's going to be, you know, probably there. I'm sure there's areas up on the, up on the bowl up there that can drift over 10 feet still, and it's April. That's iron right there. Howdy stranger, yonder is Jackson Hole, the last of the Old West. And that there, my friends, is in fact... Jackson Hole. Yamaha FZ07. Um, this thing is pretty cool. Um, I've had a lot of fun on it. I am a big fan of doing extensive research before I buy anything, especially something that has value. Um, I'm a, I'm a fan of, of buying things and hanging on to them for a long time too. I know some guys are like, oh, I have to have this year's bike and then, you know, or car or, or device or whatever it is. And then next year they're like, oh, I'm bored of it. I'm going to get the new model or I'm going to get something different. But uh, me, I do extensive research and I, I go for something that is all around. So I have um, faith in this bike that it is an all-around um, bike in fact it it has plenty of juice and I said in uh, in the last episode in episode 2 that um, um, you know people are riding these things around a lot and you know a beginner will hop on it and it's easy enough for a beginner to to enjoy and um, and they may not ever get sick of it so then you can get an, ex an experienced rider on it and you um, and you get an experienced rider on them and they still have fun you know they have really high reviews they you know get the cheesy grin uh, permagrin going on because they're lightweight they're flickable um, as you guys just saw coming up the pass you know we have 12 percent grades going uphill and um, hair hairpin turns you know I think there's only there's three hairpin turns that I did and I was leaning pretty good um, and so the bike is, is flickable, they call it. They call it flickable, for those of you that are new to technology, or to uh, terminology, rather. Um, so it's, it's lightweight, it's not top-heavy at all. In fact, uh, a lot of people are complaining about the exhaust. I, for one, love the exhaust on this thing. Um, I, I'm not, like, super in love with it because it could sound better, but it sounds really, really good to me. Um, it, it hums really well. It does have a catalytic converter on it. And the headers are, you know, headers. So, um, you know, a lot of a lot of guys, especially on the forum, are are um, buying aftermarket. You know, you have Yakupovic, um, you have um, I don't even know. There's an M77. There's an M4. There's the Two Brothers. Um, there's a lot of different types that you can buy. So, um, I just bought the bike, and my bank took a good hit. So, I am going to wait until I am paid off on the bike and bored of the sound so once it's paid off and and i'm bored then maybe i'll go ahead and um, invest in a nice sound so um but other than that i mean i'm i'm cool with just how this is right now it's a good bike i do I, this thing is stupid i uh, we'll get to that later but um good engine it's a 689 cc engine it um you know, it, uh, when you fill out your insurance, you, uh, you put the 700cc. Um, 
and uh, it, it, it's pretty good. It produces 50 horsepower and 75 torque, I believe. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. Please do, because I am not perfect by any means and um, I am always willing to learn so um, when I was doing my research the the people were saying that the transmission is smooth and they are right um, I had an old bike before it's a 1990 Suzuki GS 500 and the you know it was old it was abused it, it had been dropped it hasn't been wrecked but it was dropped um, you know it had scratches and dings but it was my first bike and I loved it um, it uh, but it was definitely you know this is night and day you know you get on a new bike like this especially something with the high technology and I and this is where it kind of goes above and beyond but uh, my mechanic in town was saying that there's technologies in these bikes um, that Yamaha has instilled and it, it just makes everything work in sync um, and that does include the exhaust uh, the exhaust will give you the right amount of back pressure um, it gives you the the proper amount of um, of uh, airflow, you know, I try to put it in layman's terms, but the um, everything is tuned to be in sync throughout the entire bike. And as soon as you start changing things up, um, you just need to know what you're doing, you know. And a lot of guys are just doing their exhaust, but then you get the other guys that are like, well, if you do an exhaust, then of course you have to do a controller so that you can manage the fuel and air. So um, you have different types of I think the most popular one that I've seen anyways is the EJK. Um, they run, you know, your exhaust is going to run, you know, for an Acropovic, you're going to be paying around a thousand uh, for something just to slip on. You're going to be paying at least three, four, five hundred bucks. So, um, you know, if you have the money for that, great. If that's what you like, great. Um, I am a fan of keeping things alone until I know exactly what the heck I'm doing. There's a sweet bike. I think that's the that's the Grom Honda Grom. Oh no, that's the KTM. KTM, sweet. That's a nice bike. That was brand new. That guy just bought his too. Those are good bikes. I heard that those were uh, comparable to these. Um, I don't know. We'll have to check that out. I thought I saw a review when I was doing the research. The review they had the uh, the Street Fighters and the you had the KTM and I think that was the 690 and uh, it didn't it didn't nearly look aggressive enough to be the 1199 so um, but yeah that, that was a sweet bike but um, they uh, they were doing the comparison on one of the YouTube uh, videos between a bunch of different Street Fighters and actually the FC07 ranked number one among a lot of bikes um, and the price is awesome too so I think that really had it may not perform as well because you know it doesn't come with ABS um, it's not a 1,000 liter bike, but it has really good torque. It's a lightweight bike, and it's flickable. It does not have um, ABS in, in America. Now, in America, this is called the FZ07. What else on the bike? Um, a 120 Michelin. This is the older type. This, this particular bike, I bought mine used. It is a 2015. I bought it used. Um, it's crazy how, how Yamaha does that. It's... This thing was bought in June of 2014, but it's a 2015 model, and it's still spring of 2015, and I'm the second owner. So, um, the original owner was a dirt biker. He, um, he rode it, he liked it, and he had to buy his, his kid, his 16-year-old kid, a car. So, he sold it to me, and um, it's been a great bike for me. So, um, those of you that have watched my previous episodes, on this channel, um, on this YouTube channel, and heard me describe a little bit about it, like how my mechanic went through it, said that it's really good, got the oil changed, prettied it up, and um, everything checks out fine. So I actually walked away with a sweet deal on that. These things, brand new, are $7,000. Um, $69.90 is the MSRP in the US. And uh, um, you know, out the door, you're going to be paying your dealer fees. You're your tax title license you're going to be doing a whole bunch of add-ons you know of course at a dealer they're always going to try to get you to you know pimp it out you know they're going to want to have you put on a, a protective paint cover and um, try to sell you a bunch of extra things who knows you know warranties and all that good stuff so um, there is a one-year warranty out of the factory on these and uh, um, 
Yeah, I mean, it, it's pretty expensive out the door. You know, you're talking but anywhere between $7,400 to $8,000 if you're buying brand new, depending on location. So um, I ended up picking mine up. Uh, he wanted $6,000 for it. Um, it had 2,374.8 miles on it when I first saw her. And uh, I talked him down to 5750 So that helped out with, with um, tax title license. That helped out with tax title license, and um, and I think after it was all said and done, I ended up paying about uh, $588, almost $600, to um, to the government in some way, somehow. So, <laughs> um, but you know, it's worth it. I, uh, so you know, a little over seven, what, seven two, seven three, seven four, almost seven four. That, so. Oh, look at that. Yeah, dude, that was the... Um, let's see if I can get this right. That was the Suzuki SV650 X, I want to say. I think it's the S SV650X. It's the naked bike. has the red, red frame. It looks awesome. It sounded good too. I, I know those twins sound really good. They were really well known for their for their sound. I wish that guy would come back and say hi. That would be cool. I think that was what that was. Everybody's starting to like the, the naked bikes. That's three of us on the pass at the same time. It's awesome. So um, yeah, that was actually one of my other choices. I was gonna get it, but um, you know, it's it's a good bike. I I heard better things about Yamaha than Suzuki, but the 650 is uh, you know that's, that that SV has been around for a long time. They really haven't changed much, and I think that was one of the complaints that Suzuki just isn't staying in the game with with um, with competition. You know, the, it's kind of the same boring frame that has worked. It's been a proven frame for a long, long time, but it's just not new, and uh, I think people really want new. They want to try different things, um, but uh, that that bike was kind of the step up from my old bike. I had the 650, no, the 500 Suzuki 500 GS, the GS 500, and um, I rode a buddy's. You know, there's a semi. They're a little loud. I rode my friend's uh, SV, and I liked it. It was a little heavier than what I was used to. But uh, but it sounded good. It had some good pull, but not as good as this bike. This uh, 700 is a lot lighter. Um, it's totally new, redesigned. I wonder what the 2015 or the uh, the 16 model is going to look like. Released, of course, in in 15. It pisses me off when they do that. What? January 1st. If I ever own the company, January 1st is when I'm releasing my new product. It would just make sense. So, anyway, um, good bike, real comfortable. Um, I know I kind of go off on tangents, but uh, ABS, oh, the, the braking. Um, let's uh, finish the bottom. I'll go from the bottom up. Um, the braking is really good. Four piston, um, front, dual disc in the front, no ABS. Um, the MT, of course, like I said, does offer. <laughs> the MT does offer um, uh, ABS in the front. It does have ABS, and there's only a single disc on the back, but um, it is sufficient. I, and I use it all the time. What else? The tires. So you have 120s in the front. The Michelin Pilot 3s came on this bike, and um, this bike, uh, like I said, was uh, back in. June of 14, so I believe all through 14, they did these um, pilots, and the Michelins have uh, they really good ratings. Uh, I was looking them up online. They're they're pretty spendy, but um, they're doable. You know, you just don't eat so many cheeseburgers through the week, and you should be able to afford it and be able to save up. So, um, the uh, so you have 120 Michelin Pilot threes on the front. Um, they have these sights. I don't know what the heck that's all about, but these sights are cool. They um, 
they give you pretty good road grip and it help out a lot with uh, with water. Um, I've already ridden it in snow. I was going up a up a really smooth surface. Where was I? I was going up the uh, the parking structure and I got into some snow and the back tire kind of spun out on me. But um, but there was still plenty of grip. It was awesome. Um, the uh, yeah, those sites are really nice. I do like those. A lot of people um, think that these tires, the Michelins, are really good. So you have a 120 in the front, then you have a 180 in the back. This is a Michelin. Um, it's a 180, an awesome bike, or an awesome tire. Um, I don't know why they made it so wide, but I really like it. The the wide tire in the back is cool. The um, I was looking at a chopper the other day down at my mechanic's shop, and and his, uh, his he's got a custom uh, bike he's he's doing in there actually it's a buddy of his that that he's doing and it um, it uh, has a 160 on the back and for some reason it looks a lot fatter than mine mine's 180 on these FCs and um, he has this chopper and uh, it had a 160 so I don't know why they put such a fat tire on the back but it's cool and it looks good I mean when you look at the profile from the back you know it's it's wide you got a big wide tire um, you got a pretty bulky chain oh. yeah baby that's a Hayabusa that was a Suzuki Hayabusa you know um, I was watching a I was watching a, a vlog, a moto vlog by Chase on Two Wheels, and I will um, throw out props to Chase. He does some, a really good job. I think he's been doing it for a long time. I took one of those on a uh, first ride review, and um, he <laughs> went off on a on a on a down ramp and gunned it. And he said it's terrifying. He said it is scary and. You get into first gear and you're doing 60 to 80. You get into second and you're going over 100 and then you put it in third and it's still pulling. That is scary. I mean, when you're when you're doing over 100, 130 miles an hour and the bike is still pulling just as quick and just as fast as it did in first and second gear, you got some you got some some muscle underneath you. I mean, that's a that's a sweet bike. That, yeah, I would put myself. That's terrifying. So. Um, I will link that video on YouTube. Um, you guys have to watch that. Check it out. So, um, but yeah, this is definitely all up my alley. I love the SC07. Um, handles really well. And there goes the SC. It's coming back. Don't even try it, buddy. You're not catching up to the Busa. There goes the KTM. Brand new. That one didn't sound as cool. Huh. I'm gonna hang out up here. What else? So we have tires, um, rims. I don't know anything about the rims, but they look like they're solid rims. I know some people are taking their their whole assembly apart. Um, they're giving them to their paint guy, and they are powder coating them whatever color they want. Now, um, that's cool. I do like the black. Uh, and it's the way it was made from the factory. Um, I don't know. I guess I, I thought of dipping them red to match the spring. You know, you have the red in there. I have red gloves and jacket, so that's my color: black, red, and white. Um, and sometimes yellow. I have a yellow backpack. Uh, but um, the uh, yeah, I mean the rims are rims. As long as they keep me on the ground and keep me safe, that's uh, that's really what all I worry about. The uh, the tire pressure, if I remember right, it is um, it is 31 in the front and 33 in the back. Nope, 33 in the front cold and 36 in the back. So when I first got the bike, they were actually low, and um, I blame that actually not on the previous owner but um, being in southern Utah where it's warm and then I bring it up here it's colder 
Um, it was just snowing a couple days ago, and of course your tire is going to deflate a little bit. So I put the proper amount of, of uh, air in there once I put it into the shop and um, just kind of did a once over, made sure everything was good. Now a lot of guys will start talking about, um, you know, oh, I deflate the tire so that you have better grip on the corners, or I air it up because you get better gas mileage, and you know, I don't know. I, I, I don't believe in that stuff. Um, not that I don't believe because sure it can help you know you deflate you have better grip in the corners but again Yamaha designs this stuff extensively before they release it to the public for safety and um, they're designed that way for a purpose and there, there's a purpose to everything that's that's professionally designed um, by Yamaha so just leave it how it is. Yamaha does a good job with with these now that um, Yamaha did, these bikes are kind of geared toward beginners they're not because they're fun, but they are because um, they're easy to ride, they're really easier to ride. But um, the reason why I say that they're kind of geared towards um, toward beginners is because these plastic pieces, these are interchangeable and they are cheap. You can take all of these off if they scratch, um, if they crack, if you drop the bike, if they break, whatever. Um, they're they're cheap pieces, but they look good and. Um, they're there so that you can fix them if, if they create if they crack you can just go and order a new one and this whole piece you can just swap it out with a brand new one it's like you have a brand new bike again i like that because i'm sure it's not a matter of if it's a matter of when i wreck um, it's going to be easy to make it look new again um, the front fender is the same way this isn't carbon fiber people say that it's carbon fiber but it's not it's just a hard plastic um, it's a lightweight hard plastic it's a cool little I don't know if you can hear that it has a cool little sound to it. it has like a little texture on it um really nice material and um yeah i like the plastics on it i'm not a fared type of person i love the naked bike but i don't consider this fairing i consider this um styling i guess you know, you can put styling this is functional by the way mud gets caught up you know a little bit of rain and stuff it um it is functional it's not just there for looks now um you know one question i have while i'm talking about these these fenders is this the air intake does this actually is this functional i don't know if you can see that let me know throw out some comments there i don't know if these are like there's you know something up behind there yeah, i see a lot of wires and stuff but where is the air intake on this thing um, I need to know, next time I change my oil, I need to know where in the heck to do the, uh, the air filter. And I have no clue where that thing is, so, um, let me know. It'd be kind of cool if these are actually functional. There's some, uh, you know, for aftermarket modifications, there's these grills. Um, you can actually remove these and paint them to your color. I was thinking on doing red, but, um, just haven't had time to really research it. I don't even know how to take this thing apart yet, but... I'm sure it can't be too hard. And, uh, yeah, some guys are painting these things. But I don't know what even, what's even back there, behind there, and if it's uh, if it's functional for air intake or not. So please let me know and let the, let, let the rest of the form know. Um, guys are taking these off, painting them. Um, they're putting a screen on. There's an aftermarket screen that you can get to protect this. I have a couple of dings. Actually, I bought it with these couple of dings here. Southern Utah, there's a lot of red dirt down there. Um, so the guy had some some red dirt, and uh, he's a dirt biker, so well, I'm not saying that he took this thing off-road, but there are a lot of rocks and stuff flying around down there. Um, what else? What else? Oh, uh, as far as modifications go, um, you can do the seat. Um, you can do the seat. Um, they make a couple of different types of seats for more padding. Um, just going around town, this thing is pretty comfortable. Um, it's not the greatest. You know, if you're not used to riding a bike like myself, this whole past week I have been getting like horse saddle butt, and it doesn't ache at night. But just you know, whenever you if you've been riding for an hour, kind of stop and go and, and tinkering around town, it can be aching a little bit just on the inside of your thighs. And I think it just kind of this edge right here kind of cuts into it. It does push forward into the saddle, and um, you kind of have to put yourself back, but that's fine. It gives you 
a lot of grip for your legs around the tank. Um, it, it has a small profile, so it's not like riding a big fat saddle or anything. So it's it's, it's fairly comfortable, but um, but too long, you know, more than an hour, maybe two hours, you know, it starts to ache a little bit. But it is a little cheap. Um, and some guys, you know, they they have different bikes, so the crotch rockets and. Um, you know, like the R6 and those types, they have a lot firmer seats. You know, they're, they're made for riding on top. This one is, um, it kind of feels like you're almost riding inside of the bike. You know, you're, you're not just riding on top of the bike, you're riding kind of inside of the bike. More, more like a chopper, but not that it exaggerated. Um, but yeah, you can change out the seat. Pretty nice. You can also get a hard cover for the back. Um, the You can take this seat off and there's a little tiny like a three inch pocket in there um, and you can you can get a get a hard cover to go over that so you can you can buy different colors and match your bike if you want or you can you know I, I don't know if I would get a red one that would look a little weird but. so I was down in Utah when I bought the bike and I was on my way back up and I was talking to Griffith about um, about the uh, about the little holder here and um, what he did is uh, he took these things off the the passenger pegs. You can actually just undo these these frame bolts right here, and um, both sides of this thing this pops right off. It's, that is pretty simple actually. But once you do that, you can see that this holder is part of this frame. So if you want to do that, what you need to do is find something else to mount this. Um, this isn't a bad place to have it, but that's a good opportunity as long as you can find out something with that hose. Um, where to put it and how to get it in there but um, yeah what Daryl did was um, he took off he heard from a friend that um, on both sides up here in the front you have these brackets and they're just reflectors or side reflectors that's all I'm gonna do this bolt take off this little frame take off the reflector and then use this black frame um, to mount onto here so then you can go right onto this bolt um, rig it however you want and and um, create a little frame to house this thing in there and it works works well so um, just a thought if you ever decide to take these things off make sure that you can remount this thing properly so that you're um, so that it's safe so that it doesn't um, get all gummed up you know sometimes some rocks and stuff can hit it you know you you probably want to there's this little fender inside of here so you want to stay in front of that so that rocks aren't coming up and hitting this you could crack this and then you know then you're in trouble so make sure that you come up and keep that thing up out of the way so that it's not getting hit too much um yeah we got these caps here this has nothing to do with the frame all this is is just a cap you can take this off and you just see the frame back there um it just protects you from your leg and i don't know it's just for looks so you can take these off you can paint them um you don't even have to have them there. I do like this thing here though, so that your pant leg stays nice. Um, what else do we have going on? The spring. The spring is adjustable. Uh, I want to say nine positions. I believe it's adjustable in nine different positions. So um, that's all preload. It's um, it's the amount of preload. And uh, there's a graph that I read somewhere with weight. Uh, and it relates the the weight of the passenger to um, to which preload you should use. So from the factory, I believe it's set to preload number three. So um, you, you can see there's a little line up there on the very top, and then um, and then you have divot. So that's setting one, two, and then three. So um, it was it's got to be more than three. Oh, I see how it is. So there's a little bump on the bottom too. So, so that one is also set on number three, and it only goes. It doesn't make a full circle. So yeah, you do have nine settings: three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then you have the two bumps to hold it in place. So, um, oh, and also to to adjust this inside of the trunk of whatever there is for a trunk, there is a tool to to do that. So you take that tool, and that helps you uh, preload. Um, that setting for whatever you like, but um, there is a graph if you do a little Google searching um, I don't know what the exact numbers, but I know that I'm 185 pounds and for a 185 pound person I think that's kind of the 
average weight of of these riders they determined so that's why they preset um number three for um the weight that i happen to be so i didn't have to change mine um and it feels good uh, i figure i'll just get used to it i don't even think i'm going to mess with it um, i might do a little bit of research on it and see what guys are doing um, so if you have any comments on it or have any knowledge about it um, let me know um, and uh, it'd be nice to see i'm curious about what people think about that and um, if there's anything that um, that we can do to uh, give ourselves a better ride so um, otherwise i mean it, it feels really good the way that, that it is for me so um working our way up what do we have okay so here's another thing that uh, when i bought the bike for some reason the um the loopback hose was unplugged here so this is oh that's loose too <laughs> that's not good it's a little loose in there i'm gonna take a look at that right now actually this is exactly why oh, look at that that thing's loose too jeez glad i'm seeing this stuff uh yeah make sure that your nuts and bolts are tight this thing's i feel a little loose the other one on the other side was a little loose too so i think i'm gonna find an allen wrench i believe that there's an allen wrench in here just for that purpose and i thought i would never ever 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 have to use these tools but now i can show you exactly what we have in here so i got a little kit um, here's that tool for doing the the shock that's what this thing is for you got a flat put it in there get a little um, grab on it and that it helps adjust your preload spring so a lot of people were asking what in the hell is that thing it looks weird i don't even know how to use it so um, don't throw it away that's your preload spring your rear spring adjustment tool uh, what else have we got in there What's this thing? Oh. is this what i think it is maybe Maybe not. I don't know what this thing is, actually. Uh, some people were saying that there's a helmet lock in here, but I haven't figured the damn thing out. Maybe this is the helmet lock. I tried it earlier today, but it doesn't make sense because somebody could just come up and cut the, the little chin strap on your helmet. You can just cut it and boom, you got a free helmet. See the horn? Sounds like a piece of junk. Sounds like a bike normally does. Um, I'm not a fan of the horn. It sounds stupid. Oh, um, the levers. A lot of guys are doing their levers. Um, I do like mine. Um, it's good. You have a, a little thing here. Now, here's something that my mechanic taught me. Um, when you have this deal, you see this little thing, and it, it kind of makes a noise. So when I got my bike, it was actually like this. And my mechanic said... That sucks because water will get down in here. This little slot in there is actually, um, I don't know if you guys can hear with that wind, crap. Um, this is actually a, um, a, a drain, a water drain. So if it's raining or anything or you're washing your bike, water will get down inside of there, get into your cable and then rust everything out and that sucks. So you don't want that to happen. Make sure that it is either like this or all the way back around again and down so that it drains water doesn't get down inside of your hose um, that will give you um, a little bit of cushion on your on your clutch but um, it'll also bring it in a little bit closer you know there might be a little bit of play or whatever but who cares um, it's, it's designed that way so another thing on this other one um, a lot of people will um, swap out their their levers this lever is adjustable. You have uh, five different positions. One being, you open it up, go over to one, and it's the farthest out. Um, and that's for that's for your brake. And so you have to reach a little bit farther. I have shorty fingers, so I'm gonna adjust mine to five. And it snaps it down a little bit closer to you. You can see how it, um, there's quite a bit of travel with the spring coming out, but at least it's closer to you. You don't have to reach as far. Um, and the travel to actually apply the brake 
is you know just maybe a, an inch or something so i did that um so that's just something that you guys can take a look at if you haven't known that already um the mirrors a lot of people were complaining about the mirrors you should have ridden my old suzuki because that thing rattled like a snake this thing um is solid i like the mirrors um that kind of goes in hand with um one of the youtube videos that i was seeing the guy was complaining that he wasn't getting good gas mileage and also that there was too much vibration in the bike well he was used to riding an old um, four piston uh crotch rocket where he was cruising around at eight nine thousand rpm and he was riding this bike the exact same way you have to change your riding style when you're on a bike like this um you know you have a lot of low end torque like i said before so you don't have to wrap it out you can ride between two and three uh rpm and there's a little indication on the on the screen that says eco i really like the bike it, it's been comfortable the the lights work oh there's a little like a run light thing i don't know if you guys can see that yeah there's like a little running light down inside of there um just adds a little something something so if you're if you're in the dark your headlight doesn't actually come on until you start the bike but this little thing glowing um i was out last night and it actually produces a pretty good amount of light just enough if it's pitch dark and you can't see anything this light is going to allow you to see um around the bike you know out here in the front and then it lights up a little bit around the bike so um it's kind of cool i i like it this adds a little accent so but you know you get you get these chicken strips so you know that's what these passes are for you know you gotta work on these on these strips and the, i don't know if you guys know what chicken strips are we probably do but if you don't it's it's the amount of turn that you have it's you know you if you're not wearing down the outside of your wheel um you're not leaning far enough so a lot of guys are scared including myself to lean way too far because i mean that, that angle right there if you're leaning on that angle you're scraping stuff you know that's what these pegs are for these pegs are designed to they're feelers you know they're kind of like tentacles they're, when you lean too far it's going to hit the ground and they're going to scrape um they do break easily um this one's already broken because i came down too far and it kind of bent it a little bit and in the back um, of that little thing that just a little piece of metal broke off but um, it's not loose uh, it's a little loose but it um, it's still inside of there but um, someday some way maybe even in the next five minutes um, those things are going to break so but uh, my mechanic is funny my mechanic said you know you're a chicken if you can't wear off the um, the the Michelin man and on these Michelins I don't know if you notice but there is a little tiny can you see that that little guy right there that's the michelin man and that's your goal you need to wear that thing off let me see if i can find a better one they're on the front too on, on all the michelins and they put those on there for the bikers they have uh yeah here's another one right there right by that arrow that little guy right there that's a michelin man and i've only been able to hit him a little bit but not very much so um that's the goal he said wear off the michelin man if you can wear that off you're doing something right there's a kcm oh yeah that guy's ready to go across the world on that thing Sheesh. um so anyway i'll try to get these videos out as soon as i can and um let me know if you guys like things if you um hate things um i am open to all kinds of comments uh you know how good the views are how bad the views suck um and um, if you guys want to hear anything different or learn anything more about the bike that's great um if you guys want to know anything about jackson hole i'm your guide so let me know and comment and please subscribe and um, if you have your own page uh invite me and i'll definitely subscribe and and um, I am a learner at heart. I love learning new things and seeing new things. So um, I figure there's nobody in the world, even if, you, if your best friend is a vegetable, um, you can always learn from that person. There went something running down there. I think that was a 
is either a coyote or a wolf. Probably a coyote. We do have wolves here, by the way. But, uh, ah, life is always an adventure. Thanks, guys. Thanks for watching. See ya. Just want to ride my motorcycle And I don't want to tickle I'd rather ride my motorcycle And I don't want to die I just want to ride my motorcycle You know, I've been singing this song for about eight or nine years. That's amazing that somebody could get away with singing a song like this for about eight years, you know? You know, what's even more amazing than that is that somebody could make a living singing a song like this for eight years. And I told, it, I told about everything I could about this song. I told about when I wrote it and how and why. But the one thing I always used to neglect to explain was the significance of the pickle. It was about the time I was riding my, riding my motorcycle down a mountain road. I was doing 150 miles an hour. I was playing my guitar. On one side of the mountain road there was a mountain. And on the other side there was nothing. There was just a cliff in the air. I wasn't paying attention, and you know that's dangerous, driving your motorcycle on a mountain road, a lot of curves and stuff like that, playing your guitar. All of a sudden, a string broke off my guitar. It broke right around here, went flying across the road and wrapped itself around a yield sign. Well, you know, the sign didn't break, and it didn't pull out of the ground. The string didn't break, didn't come out of my guitar. So I held on to my guitar, and I held on to my bike, and I made a sharp turn off the road. But luckily, I didn't go into the mountain. I went over the cliff. I was doing 150 miles an hour sideways and 500 feet down at the same time. I was looking for the cops, because I knew that it was illegal. Well, I... I knew that that was it. I knew that I didn't have long to live in this world. And in my last remaining seconds in the world, I decided to write one last farewell song to the world. I took out a piece of paper. I took out a pen. I sat back and thought a while, and then I started to write. I don't want a pickle. Just want to ride my motorcycle. And I don't want a tickle. I'd rather ride my motorcycle. And I don't want to die, just want to ride my motorcycle. Well, I knew it wasn't the best song I ever wrote, but I didn't have time to change it. But you know, you know the amazing thing is that I didn't die. I landed on the top of a police car, and it died. I drove into town at a screaming 175 miles an hour, singing my motorcycle song. I pulled into town and stopped out in front of the general store, and out in front of the store was a man eating the most tremendous pickle. A pickle the size of four pregnant watermelons. Such a huge monster pickle. He walked up and pushed a pickle in my face and started asking me questions. And it was about the same time I noticed a pickle in my face. I noticed a cord hanging from the long end of the pickle, going up his sleeve, down his shirt, into his pants, into his shoes, out his heel, and into a briefcase he had near his feet. Well, I knew, I knew it wasn't an ordinary pickle. It was about the same time I noticed a cord coming out of the pickle that a four-foot cop arrived with a five-foot gun. 
A cop that one time must have been around six foot seven was met at the bottom of a mountain by a flying, singing, writing weirdo. Well, he walked up and with one tremendous hand, he grabbed a pickle from the other guy and threw it a hundred feet straight up in the air. While the pickle was halfway between going up and coming down, he took out his five-foot gun and put a three-inch bullet hole right through the long end of the pickle. The pickle started coming down. He caught the pickle on his big toe. Balancing the pickle on his big toe, he took out a ten-foot ticket. He wrote it up, and then he rolled it up took the ticket and stuffed it in the bullet hole in the middle of the pickle, took the pickle with the ticket and shoved it down my throat. Well, it was at that very moment that the pickle with the ticket was going down my throat that I knew for sure that I didn't want a pickle. I don't want a pickle Just want to ride my motorcycle I don't want a tickle I'd rather ride my motorcycle And I don't want to die Just want to ride my motorcycle